Male judge, um, debaters and judges ignoring my position to focus on some gender free abstract framework or intangible case because I'd like to see that more than 13 of us at this year's TOCI affirm. The role of the judges to promote critical education for all debaters, which means that they must enhance our potential to expose dominant and oppressive biases both outside and in the debate space. As educators, judges can uniquely make debate space with challenging oppressive norms. Drew writes. Given the current assault on democratic public life, educators must create conditions that link learning to social change in various sites and pedagogy to critical subversion of dominant power. Rather than viewing teaching as a technical practice, radical pedagogy is political. Learning is about transforming knowledge and providing students with skills to fight deeply rooted injustices in a world founded on gendered inequality. This means we need to discuss issues like sexism instead of silencing them. Every single time I've read a feminist position this weekend, my opponent has run T theory or a gender free K or dissed. This argument invasion, not engagement. Critical education means you talk about the issues instead of just figuring out new ways not to. The role of the ballot is to endorse the debater who fosters solutions to social oppression. Fostering solutions to social oppression means identifying and trying to redress inequality rather than theorizing without realizing. This requires actively engaging the other side, not just hacking past each other. And while my role of ballot is open to multiple forms of oppression, it's time to specifically talk about women for a change. Here's why. First, this topic uniquely impacts female bodies, as adolescents have historically been defined in gender terms that exclude us, McElroyd 1. Understanding of adolescents as a developmental stage are linked to colonial concerns about condemnation and civilized the primitive. People identified as adolescents are expected to remain in continual transition. If they engage in sex and reproduction, they are charged in causing a number of social consequences. The invention of adolescence and its interweaving with colonial concerns is not gender blind. The basic assumption is that the goal of development through adolescence is the white, middle-class, civilized male, she adds. The female emerges as the first adolescence. The movement from savage boyhood to manhood requires that boys go through a stage characterized by the attributes of the civilized female. Viewed one as one rung before the civilized boy, all adolescents were ascribed for feminine traits as physical or mental volatility and emotionally. Thus, any discussion of adolescence has to directly discuss women when it means that they can't leave, um, leave them out in the next speech. Second, if we don't talk about women, then we actively deter participation in debate. The culture itself uniquely targets women, making gender-related issues a key part of changing the activity, Norton shows. Female debaters disproportionately receive comments on their clothing, mannerism, and even during a debate, while the com commentary for male debaters seldom touches these issues. The community adapts certain factors that women are uncomfortable, like using sexual assault as a synonym for dominant debate rounds. For the debate community to continue to advance in the right direction, it needs to change. Change doesn't need to be radical, but for some supporters to see the vocal and unapologetic. I don't exclude any other oppressed groups, I just focus my advocacy on one. All groups matter, but some advocacies must specifically be for women for us to meet the role of the judge. Next is the harms. Across cultures, gender power imbalances result in violence against adolescent women. Figo 1. Violence against women reflects unequal power relations in virtually all societies. Enforced marriages or marriages at very young age, lack of education, and lack of choice about pregnancy within marriage are forms of coercion that aggregate violence against women. This puts adolescent women at unique risk for rape and spread of HIV, the UN shows. Women experience unique vulnerabilities to HIV during conflict. Rape can be used as a weapon of war, increasing HIV transmission between because rates of HIV among military personnel typically exceed those within the general population. Adolescent girls are particularly vulnerable and abducted and used for sexual purposes by armed groups, he adds. Poverty can push wood girls into age distributed relationships as a driver of HIV risk for adolescent girls. In South Africa, 34% of adolescent girls report being in a relationship with a man of at least five years their senior. Such relations expose young women to unsafe sexual behaviors, low condom use, and increased rate of sexually transmitted infections. And lack of medical autonomy uniquely worsens this harm, and oh one. Adolescent girls have many problems accessing um, contraception and face barriers controlling their fertility. Cultural norms value girls for their reproductive capabilities, and many communities encourage child marriage and rapid conception. This results in barriers to contraception and safe abortion services for adolescent women. In fact, lack of medical autonomy is directly linked to physical abuse, NARA 1. Many young women fear physical or emotional abuse if forced to disclose their pregnancy. An estimated 678,810 children were victims of abuse in 2012. Young women considering abortion are particularly vulnerable because nearly half of pregnant teens have a hist um, history of abuse report being assaulted during their pregnancies, most often by a family member. Mere notification of pregnancy is a flashpoint for violence. Among minors who did not tell a parent for their abortion, 30% experienced violence in their family, feared violence, and being forced to leave home. A 13-year-old was shot to death by her father after he learned that she had was to terminate a pregnancy caused by his incest. It's time to end this patriarchy. 
Thus, the affirmative advocacy is that states should grant adolescent women the right to make autonomous sexual and reproductive medical choices. This entails medical confidentiality and the freedom to decide what happens to their bodies, FICO 2. Young people, um, young people are require access to full range of sexual and reproductive health service, including counseling. This means ask questions. The rights to health service include delivery of care and secure conditions of confidentiality. Health care provides um, should recognize that adolescents can make substantial life choices. Chronological age should not determine rights to make sexual and reproductive choices. Cut the next card. Next, confidentiality is prerequisite to any other solvency because since without it, women don't get help. Raw distress. A physician-patient relation is built on the foundation of trust. If this deteriorates, constraints will be placed on the physician's ability to advocate for patients' health. Patients have a right to determine the time and whenever sensitive information is revealed to others. If distrust in the medical community occurs, this may terminate the relation with physicians into adulthood, eliminating the capacity for physicians to act and advocate for their well-being. Without confidentiality, patients may withdraw trust and terminate the relationship, forfeiting the positive impacts of the physician towards their well-being. And doctors are in a unique position to draw attention to women's harms and do something about it. FIGO 3. There is need for wider awareness of the magnitude of violence against women. Only if this is recognized can be addressed. Physicians as advocates for women are uniquely placed to assist in publicizing the types of violence against women and the implications society is allowing for it to continue. It adds, physicians treating women are ethically obliged to inform themselves of the manifestations of violence and learn to recognize these cases. That's why I from and cut the cut of the cases. Did you get uh, that? We can delete everything you didn't read. Yep. Um, there's not much there. to affirm inherently, rather just my personal, like, Okay, it's just your personal conviction, right? Mm -hmm. But that is, like, relevant in terms of oppression. You advocate that, right? Um, I think that there's just a reason why we ought to talk about women in the context of this debate round. I okay, don't frame cool. it as a reason to prefer the framework, rather okay. just a reason as to why it's time to talk Which about is, these issues. Just a reason as to why it is relevant, correct? A relevant issue? Yeah. Cool. So, let's go to the Giroux argument. Sure. So, the judge has to promote critical education, right? Mm -hmm. But later on, the Later on in the framework, you say that these institutions the judge works within are already flawed. How do you solve? Yeah, so if the judge is working as a critical educator, then they're more likely to address those biases within the system. Okay, they the address those parts, biases. It's the do you want me to talk about the specific part. harms that I talk about? Sure. So the first harm is the McElroy card, which is very specific to like um, the topic, so I don't see how that applies. The Norton card, however, is specific to debate. So it says that the debate culture uniquely targets women. If we talk about it within the debate round and the judge uniquely has an obligation to look to positions like this AC, then we are more likely to change it than if we do nothing about it, right? It's better to work like to change the system than just let it be oppressive around us. Okay. Um, so you say that we should like first talk about women, like oppression against women, and then talk about others, correct? Um, I say we can talk about any type of oppression under my role as a ballot. I give reasons as to why women. Prioritization, correct? Yeah, I do, but okay. you can definitely read other uh, like okay. arguments about oppression under my framework, and it will link into the role of the ballot. You'll just have to answer those arguments. I don't want to have a debate about oppression Olympics. It does link into my role as a ballot. Okay. So, how does the app solve? Um, so the app solves for the harm set up in the like second part that was labeled harms. So it talks specifically about how gender power balances result in violence against adolescent women. This puts them at so a unique risk for rape. has the app been implemented before? What? Like, has the app ever been implemented? Like, has it ever solved? Um, I don't think so, but my solvency is very specific. gives adolescents the right to make autonomous medical choices and confidentiality? No, so you get confidentiality with it. It's not extra topical. Okay. It's very specific to how the right to make autonomous medical choices um, for these adolescent women 
results in confidentiality. There's also arguments in the solvent section about how the physician relationship is uniquely key and how AMC is key to solving that. That's also in the harm section of the case.
Shop taking the apples, prove the revolution true, the general principle affirmative, often supposed uniquely through the general case of the topic to resolve, just a particular case of violations that you have specifically giving adolescents the ability to actually uh, consult with doctors and give them the uh, ability to uh, undergo the oath of sexual community, the, the, uh, the chase, chase the standards, one to this, their sensation distorts, their negative regard because one here, uh, never, 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 never advocacy, very little regard to content of the ACU. This works the fact that they were pushed out of the ACU, stuck this and stuck on meaning, just degrades me, artificial access to their affairs, that sensation, a minor distance, on actually responsible for crime, killed that piece of the zero project. We are always low quality. Actually, it makes sense in two. They have people being interested in concluding the FYI, including the night structural disadvantages, talks about their position on the reciprocal. Because one, they get to pick up the advocacy, meaning the grant qualitative letter goes in line. Two, they get to determine that they're among grand reciprocity. He must be the equal threshold set about. Uh, skip the red analytics. Mm -hmm. Additionally, specified advocacy will allow them to get out of generic disadvantage to their position, leaving qualitatively better friends. Whereas, our disadvantage to those generic disadvantages pose a force to debate the point obviously based towards them, uh, towards them, and always have no reason to throw around it. Generic disadvantages uh, wouldn't be placed where we prepare, and we serve possible point rather, and then we get sent dissatisfied. No, stop saying that, uh, no stop saying that the existing advocacy, no other options, so soon, sole justification, just the reason we have, uh, uh stop saying that we keep the ground, uh, and ground because the predicated empirical facts, no, stop saying that we make arguments, grant, just keep it as the basis of all, all forms of argumentation, uh, deep voter. Vote on parents to debate the competition to go by your view. Doesn't include a debate or debating round of views. So parents to give way to all forms of debate. Uh, and dropping the, uh, drop the argument is more educational uh, because, because we get the benefit of uh, uh, drop the argument because uh, there's an infinite number of interpretation that you could possibly uh, file it, which means that dropping the, uh, dropping the argument is the only way to actually compensate. Uh, and dropping the argument is the most uh, fair thing for you to do. Use competing interpretation reasonably. A is no rather than mitigating shall be. But to judge the effect is threshold unreasonable abuse. Therefore, lastly, no RBI to be warned. First challenge, if I could debate, is never run theory on the other, other group of theory debaters, since they will immediately lose an RBI, incentivize me to abuse of debate, simply abuse people, go them into theory, beat them in, practically come to the thousand how it sounds to arguments, because effects of future around norm setting argument, and then the round second argument, that makes sense to say, staying on forever for me, so logical, logic, technical, from the macro level theory plans, but even if more often, it runs to the third, since theories, uh, since theories, for some of the government rules, how, how debate runs and rules, rather than being a part of debate itself, there's just a few ways to be theory debate, evolving towards the unfair norms, uh, short for when four, th I, and four theories, uh, uh, reasons drop the argument, which means you uh, wing off of this completely your circle. And my impact to fairness completely outweigh the AC as a key to existence. Absolute fairness, debates on the act and activity would cease to exist by and left. Creating a level playing field, the court said to fairness, chance of victory integral, continue of existence of debate. The game is slanted towards one competitor, other participants that exist uh, are likely to go home and never have a shot of winning a weird game. This incentivizes work hard to develop an innovative arguments and non existent and this controls the internal to the world about. A, before we stop trying to make change and the round continue, we need to create a fair playing field. B, the norm set of the work and create the, uh, well, the use of the people going to tournaments to learn about anything. And, next off. Text, do the app with the, without, with the methodology of intersectionality. Uh, first, there is no permutation to the uh, counterplay. If, if uh, one exceeds the logic, granted monocycle oppression, uh, creates a logic justified violence as truth, as, as Jared. Um, single kind of violence, the violence, both claiming the origin of violence, give them the, the moral right to root that root that root that justification use of violence, drive on the system, and help us for a struggle against single that sets an argument of violence and permitted to achieve the, this means that every baseball game we cannot be violence is means that only form of dialogue many philosophers propose that it would be based on the tribute of origin of evil, single philosophical answer of uh, violence can never be partial. Uh, she's trying to, she's gonna try to extend an argument saying that she doesn't uh, specifically prioritize uh, she she doesn't uh, say she says that other forms of repression are uh, relevant. But the problem is that uh, it's much she's doing that weighing in the AC that means that's why we need to specifically uh, look to uh, oppression against the uh, female body. That means that is still a like, that's still a reason that's why you prefer the uh, that's why you prefer the kind of plan. And also intersectionality key to solve back for the patriarchy articulated by the app so far. And uh, the intersectional program provides a way legitimate experience of victims who have been part of the dominant culture of discourse victims. These both experiences must be heard across different perspectives, different theoritical disciplines, different norms, set the accountability, improve the response of victims, survive with diverse backgrounds, and such structural approaches to domestic violence, other necessary critique the movement in which the immigrant victim, victim with disability, other victims, the whole different part of their part of themselves. This is an internal link to a uh, world battle. If you want to actually talk about feminist oppression in the first place, uh, you need to make sure that you take an intersectional approach towards it. Uh, otherwise, we would actually be ignoring and marginalizing other female uh, uh, voices that actually need to be included in the debate six case. Go to the top. It'll just be turned. She brings about the case through personal narrative, but the problem is that uh, that's extremely problematic if she, wa uh, she wants to actually uh, solve her oppression. Uh, you relating to, you relating your oppression specifically in the round is highly productive because an emphasis on narrative emphasizes, uh, emphasizes the people's sense of being oppressed, which reifies marginalization since people are unable to consent for oppression further, uh, much only simple uh, uh, for it, uh, Brown. If this was done with successful counter tales, uh, the tools and emancipation carry techniques and stuff.
is what the link to the dispatch is. So the fact that I said that 13 women called the TOC is a link. Because they linked to a dispatch. I mean, also, um, what? I didn't say anything. Oh, I just can't do some either, I guess. All right. Um, the order is going to start on the theory shell, then go on to the counter plan, then go on to the AC. Okay. There'll be um, like cross apps on all levels, but I'll be pretty clear. <coughs> is everyone good? Yep. This type of strategy is exactly what the one AC criticizes. On theory, a counter interpretation, the act to prove the resolution true in one specific instance. If one, the opponent does not disclose on the NDC uh, NDCA which is the specific negative prep and two, there are no cross extract solved back to because I have no idea what this has he has. He does not disclose on the wiki and does not disclose any special that he has The entire tournament means that I have no abuse, no, there's no abuse on that because I would have added, had a, like a general ad if he had asked me to also cross extract solved even if I, if I, um, even if he, the just generic, this has not been 100% response, but I could have granted the links. It has plenty of prep to read also. Third, no abuse because he could have just run another Kaidi on um, page solved 100% of the views. Second, no abuse. He could have read arguments about abortion and, um, and HIV. These are very comic arguments, topic literature. Just look at the of their plenty in the topic literature. This is coming specifically from the Matt Lloyd one evidence. And the one AC should that I'm solving 100% of the net benefit to my counter is going to be 100% of the affirmative case. The fact that I had can engage in it. On the um, drop the arguments issues. He never contextualized what drop the argument means. I contextualized drop the argument that we look to the um, advocacy that he wants me to defend as opposed to the advocacy that I am defending so 100% of the views. He could link arguments back to the generic principle at this moment and the one AR solved back 100% because there is nothing that I'm going to specifically exclude from the end, um, from the NC speech because of this habit now. Also, it's his fault for not ever contextualizing what drop the argument means. On the spice and life card, one, there's already no fairness in the debate. This is not a narrative story. Rather, the fact that only 13 women called to the TO 
constitutional zoo, so it's going to be structural fairness. I'm not reaffirming a narrative stacking you can weigh on strength of link if there is at least a terminal, if there is a terminal, if there are like not a lot of abuse on the fairness level, but there's a lot of abuse on the role of the valley. Look today, the third is always, uh, is always gonna mean that we can always just look, take away the issues that are pertinent to the real world, better look to the real world via the role of the valley coming off the AC. Let's go on to the counter plan. Counter plan makes absolutely no sense. You can't do the after an intersectional approach um, uh, approach that's not talking specifically about women. You can um, also, but you can permit. You can talk about the after the intersectionality that are per um, pertinent to women. I talk specifically about women from South Africa, women from the United States. Means that I'm always going to be I'm always going to be not beneficial for intersectionality. Per protects all um, solves none of the app because the app is very specific to women's rights issues. On to the AC. All the arguments about um, all the arguments about narrative stops are completely non-responsive. The first that it's a symbol, but no, it's not a reason to affirm. I was pretty clear in cross six about not being a reason to affirm. The next that it's subjugating knowledge because of legal oppression, but no, I'm defending a post fiat solvency attitude. This literally makes no sense in the context of the um, context of the AC. Also, off these arguments, if you don't want to have a specific role about um, that is specific to women, then you don't have to. We can just talk about equality. He concedes reasons as to why women equality is specifically good. And this <coughs> on, in this instance, which is the Maclade one evidence, means that it does not matter my narrative whatsoever. You don't have to look, you can look in the debate space off the Drew card. He reads what Rickard Evans says it and force is um, forced the coercive role, but one the same as fairness. He's saying that fairness is voters, so um fairness is voters, so it's not um, that just as coercive second, it's not dictating what the role is. I'm saying that we can only have strength of language means that I'm solving back one hundred percent. Then he says that fiat is illusory, but no, the arguments coming out of the framework are not reasons why we specifically have to talk about it in the debate round. You can cross by the arguments on narrative there. Um, even so, the arguments as to why this debate round is uniquely key mean that it's talking about it in the post-fiat sense is uniquely key. It's not a matter of fiat solutionary. I talk about solving in the post-fiat world means that I'm only solving that for my role, um, for my role of valid. On the role of valid argument specifically, he says that there are a link into the um into the picture that's counterproductive, but no, I'm talking about women of all um of all races, all um all disabilities, all like I don't know, I'm just talking about like women in general. This means that I'm very like, clearly intersectional, even if the app is specifying those arguments, not good. Then he says policy doesn't solve um, for the questioning round, but no, I'm not going for that argument. So let's go on to the app now. Extend my role to endorse the ballot, endorse the ballot, um, the ballot to endorse somebody who fosters solutions to social pressure. If you don't see a solution coming out of the negative case, you can't vote for him. Extend Macleod, one that the topic uniquely impacts female bodies as adolescents historically been defined in gender terms that exclude us. Extend the advocacy text solves. The state should grant ad, um, adolescent women the right to make autonomous choice. I'll defend it in general principle if he wins T. Then extend that confidentiality is a prerequisite to any solvency using that a woman can't get help whatsoever. This affirms under a general principle act very clear affirmative ballot. Yeah. You don't get an argument for theory. Extending a uh, first argument to a second argument, second argument, second argument, second argument, third argument, that theory, theory should not be a two-way street. Uh, how can you see the counter-interpretation, which we do not get offense on it? Uh, go straight for substance. Go to the counterpoint. Extend this text. Do the apple domestic with the archive of intersectionality. Uh, extending reason that's why you can't uh, affirm because the one who sees logic in grounding it in terms of uh, prioritization of different uh, forms of oppression is inherently uh, bad. That's an activist argument. Uh, that's the first card that I read with the uh, counterplan. That one conceded. Uh, she says that you can't do the apple without uh, prioritization of different forms of oppression. But I'm saying that uh, yes, you can. You just have to uh, not only specifically prioritize oppression of women. You have to uh, also not just. Uh, you can't just uh, prima facie prioritize oppression based on the fact that uh, it's happening only to women. You have to. Uh, you have to 
doesn't just work. Uh, you yeah, just have to look to different types of it. She's making arguments that's why you have to be inclusive. But the problem is that insofar as you're making the weighing arguments, that means that uh, you're still uh, linking into the criticism that the, only the counter plan solves. Even so, uh, she's making the, she's trying to make a permutation, uh, saying that it's a, that saying that the plan uh, talks about the multiple different women. Uh, but one this one this one this argument is only defense. It doesn't actually prove. That's why we should proactively vote for you too. Uh, this argument is too. This argument is too. Uh, that's just this argument at the top. They just have to do this because of the fact that you are prioritizing different forms of oppression. Not the fact that it is happening solely to women. It, it just has the disadvantage that only intersectionality can solve. Uh, three, uh, you don't see three. You don't actually proactively uh, engage in intersectionality. You only say that this oppression uh, only matters because it's happening to women specifically, uh, as per the weighing arguments in the uh, top in the bottom in the bottom of the AC framework. Uh, the next and the Sokolov argument. That's why uh, intersectionality is necessary for us to actually solve for patriarchy articulated in the AC. Uh, the AC is making these weighing arguments as to why women oppression uh, should always be prioritized. That is ignorant of the fact that uh, there are other forms of intersections of oppression that could also matter. The fact that you are uh, prima facie, prime, the fact that you are only only looking to these forms of oppression off the fact that they are happening to women only is an, is a link to the case, right? The, even if the app talks about other forms of oppression, right, that's not sufficient. Because of your weighing mechanism in the AC, you still link. She's undercovering on this argument, which means that it's going to be game over. Because it proves that's why you negate, because I'm actually deconstructing how we approach oppression, how we orient ourselves to oppression. In, in, insofar as I win terminal defense to the app, that proves that's why the fiat is illusory. That is a reason for you to prefer the pick over the AC. So go there. Extend the argument saying that the fiat is illusory, even if we, uh, even if you vote for the app, it isn't a proactive, uh, it, it won't actually solve the things happening. Uh, she's making the argument that we just discussed in the problem is that your draw evidence is specific to actually uh, discussing and reconsidering and fixing the actual academic sphere. The fact that we talk about the plan is not sufficient. Uh, you should probably vote on the pick because it actually reorients how we actually uh, approach forms of oppression in academia uh, in the first place, which means that the pick is not preferable because the plan will not actually happen if you vote for it. Uh, if you vote for the pick, there's actually a risk of uh, solvency that will actually change how we ourselves as debaters think about oppression in the first place. Uh, even so, uh, even so, even so, go to the uh, dissent. She's trying to make arguments as to why she doesn't like uh, because that argument is offensive. One, uh, she's still conceding the reason that's why uh, the fact that you are bringing up oppression based on this one personal testament uh, to experience is still sufficient for you to link to. Uh, even so, you still link. You can literally call her framework underneath every single argument she makes. Uh, impact talk. That's why uh, specifically when she uh, was in the debate space, she experienced these certain things. Uh, specifically uh, between the Juro two card and the Juro one card. Uh, uh, that is a, that is the reason that's why you link into the disadvantage. That is uh, offense for me. So extend the uh, Brown argument saying that your method for an approach to op oppression is uh, counterproductive because it only prioritizes uh, people's specific uh, experiences with oppression. That's the Brown argument saying that uh, your discourse is looking to only uh, specific testimonies is bad because it forces people to actually uh, stay consistent with those identities when in reality we can just deconstruct and uh, bring to light subjugated knowledge in order to actually rectify oppression happening and make sure that people can actually live past their identity rather than uh, have it define them for the entirety of their life. Uh, that is what the Brown arguments specifically say, which means that your uh, force of personal experience within the debate space is counterproductive. Uh, your force, uh, your specific accounts of uh, how debate happened is counterproductive to actually solve oppression in academia because it forces people to actually uh, identify, uh, because it forces people to stay consistent with these identities. They can never actually live past them. So, um, so then, um, even so, so she doesn't get offense on th on theory, right? You go straight to substance, right? Go um, on the pick. She's very she's undercovering on the pick a lot. She says that the app talks about other people. That is not sufficient. The fact that you are prioritizing oppression on the basis that it's happening only women to women is sufficient for you to actually link into the critique. Even so, even if you are buying the firm, one, she doesn't actually prove as to why it's net beneficial. Two, I'm proving as to why the first card is actually a disad to the permutation because it proves as to why this prioritization and single counts of vi uh, violence actually in turn cause more oppression. Even so, the Sokolov evidence was also conceded in the last week, proving as to why my method alone is much better to actually solve for oppression in the first place. I outweigh on strength of link back to her role as valid. The Giroux evidence specifically talks about how we have to rectify academia directly through academia. The problem is that Insofar as I prove as to why the plan will not actually be implemented when you vote for it, which I said in the last speech, that is not sufficient. Uh, that means that she does not actually <coughs> get as much of the strength of link back to her role as the ballot, because it proves as to why this is not a harm directly affecting us in academia, whilst I'm proving with my methodological indice, i.e. the brown evidence, 
those are proving that's why you in academia cause more oppression because of your single accounts of oppression and the non-intersectional approach of the AC through the weighing of oppression in the uh, in the um, evidence below at the um, the two independent justifications for the framework are counterproductive because they ignore other forms of oppression because they based on this one fact we should just um, do that. and two is not showing why his NC is a productive solution to social oppression, which is the role of ballot he concedes. So you can look to the my role of ballot to endorse this debater who fosters solutions to social oppression. Fostering solutions to social oppression means identifying and trying to redress inequality rather than theorizing without realizing. This requires actively engaging the other side and not just talking past each other. At the point where the only offense that he goes for is criticizing me instead of just providing a solution, he does not link into the role of ballot. This was clear in the cross it was clear in the AC. There's absolutely no neg offense that he can vote for. Let's go to the counter plan. He is poorly misundercovering the perm. Extend the perm, which is to talk about intersectionality through the app. I'm talking about women of different races. I specifically cite in the harm section women from all over the world. This means that I am talking about intersectional approach. I'm just focusing on women specifically. It's not a dichotomy. I can focus on women specifically, but um, I've examined the different facts of oppression that women meet. It means that I solve 100% of the soft law card. You can call the evidence after the round. It does not say that we should take like a completely gender blind approach. Rather, it says that we should look to women of all intersections, which is exactly what as we've heard is that it's defensive, but no, it's a test of competition, which the AC advocates for, means that there's no, no unique benefit coming out of the NR. The second argument is that the, um, that the disadvantage is about prioritizing different groups and that I don't engage, but no, I can prioritize a specific group and still talk about the intersections of that group, i.e., if we were going to prioritize things such as race, but we talk specifically about black women, then that would still be intersectional, so there's absolutely no offense coming off the counter plan. The last argument that he concedes is that you literally cannot do the act in the way that he is framing it. He's saying we should look to a gender-blind approach as he frames intersectionality. I'm saying no, that's a pretty bad way of looking at intersectionality, and the solvency of the app is very specific to women. Although it is specific to intersectional women, it is very specific to women in general. You literally have no solvency that you can vote on for the bed. Very clear affirmative ballot. The only possible place you can vote is off the AC if you don't buy the role of the ballot argument. The disadvantage is about my narrative. Don't link into the role of ballot because they're only criticizing, not providing a solution. But let's go through them now. The arguments that he goes for, specifically why narratives are bad, but he can see that my arguments are not only why, like I'm not justifying my framework simply from my personal experience. The Maculated One card is very specific that the topic literature uniquely impacts female bodies as adolescents have historically been defined in gender terms that exclude us. This is not a personal narrative, rather it's um, empirical evidence about the topic literature in general. means that he literally has no offense. Look at the extensions of the Brown card. They are specific to only using the testimony of women. This is literally the rhetoric he used. I am not only using the testimony. The opening quote that I read at the beginning of the speech was not a reason to vote for me, not a reason to vote for my framework, not a reason to vote at all. 
The only argument that he can now have going for is fiat is only the familiar. But no, it's not. I'm saying that talking about it in the debate round is uniquely key via the topic literature argument that is extended by McElroy's one. This is the only argument on the framework that are extended. I am talking about solving in the post-fiat world. The fact that I am talking about it is why I am solving in the pre-fiat world. So you can vote for the um, Robbins card. I think that the framework of it is not disclosed because the framework is new and then the contention level of it is disclosed. Maybe. I've never read the framework before. Oh, maybe you haven't. I'm pretty sure you're not familiar with it. Mm, I mean, I definitely, I only disclose what I have read. Gotcha. I I, I'm sure that my teammate disclosed it if they read it. <laughs>
congratulations to both of you for making it this far at the Valley Mid-America Cup. The decision is a 2-1 for the affirmative from Harrison. Okay, uh, I am looking all over the flow to find ways uh, to vote affirmative because I don't think that this counterplan is argued very well by the negative, but at the end of the day, that just doesn't have offense. Um, there is no real disadvantage to the counter plan, and it's a pick. So you can't really leverage your app against it. The firm doesn't have a real net benefit without a, a disadvantage or solvency deficit to the counter plan. Um, and I think that it does the app better. I think it meets your role of ballot because it's doing the app, so it is a solution, and it's just a, a different take on what that solution would look like. Um, the only potential argument I have for why the app might be better is your uh, kind of assertion that the counter plan is gender blind. But I don't really understand this argument. It, the fundamental explanation of intersectionality that I'm getting from the 2NR is that we would consider uh, the oppression of women, just women who, have, who are multiply affected uh, by different forms of oppression. And I think the 2N could do a lot better job of explaining what an example of that would look like, what an example of that would be in the topic, what other types of identity and oppression are relevant. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think that intersectionality is gender blind. It's, I mean, just definitionally, it is considering gender and some other uh, form of identity. So I don't think you really get a link to this, uh, this ad. I do think there's a very small link of the net uh, risk of the net benefit for the negative, because the app is very explicit, like, hey, we can talk about other types of oppression, that is something that would engage with my role of the ballot, that does matter. Um, but I still think that the net gets a link that um, the app prioritizes one or puts focus on one over the others, which uh, is you know not a huge disadvantage given the framing of the app, but it's enough for me to think that the counter plan is, is better, even if it's only slightly better. Um, that's pretty much it.
sympathetic to Thomas Alley. I just think, I mean, normally I would buy intersectionality arguments because most people do exactly the exact opposite of what she did, which is to say this person is the most important person to talk about. And she, I think she framed these arguments fairly well in the ANC and her response to one AR saying, there's nothing else I could have done. Right? Um, how did you evaluate my argument saying that like she inherently links because of the like no like this like assumption like the representations of just like weighing between oppression like the yeah, first so, argument in the pitch? Yeah, so I think those are two things. The first is her um, extension of McAloy in the one AR. Um, I think is a pretty good description of this, where she says again this, this argument where she couldn't have done it otherwise because McAloy said that's what the topic was about. Wait, but isn't it indicative of that claim? Is it what indicative of that claim? My like first argument in the pitch. Like uh, indicative of how saying that because it's a focus of the top split, it should therefore be prioritized. Because that doesn't seem then to say I doesn't deny that she's intersectional. Okay. Right? Because wh why could I not say? So imagine this. If I said um, Michelle Obama probably a wealthy, powerful black woman, probably has more social capital than, say, a poor male migrant farmer, okay. right? I'm not prioritizing a particular type of oppression, right? There would be ways that we would have to be able to, I mean, it's probably impossible to quantify people's privilege, right? But the privilege that someone experiences, you could talk about them and say, well, blackness, it is difficult to be black in America. It's difficult to be a black woman in America, but it's probably easier if you're the president's wife and you make $5 million a year. Right? So it's still an intersectional discussion while evaluating the different ways that the identities intersect with one another. Right? Which is, is also one of the things that I think is particularly good she does in the 2AR is where she reads her standard analysis um, under the role of Bowles, where she says, here is what it means to, uh, whatever she says, foster solutions to social oppression, which say to actively engage. At the end of the debate, I have no idea what it means to have an intersectional approach. I buy her argument that my arguments do talk about intersectionality. We talk about women across the globe, adolescent women, probably the use and type of different social class. Um, so I, I just don't think you're responding to this argument super well. Wait, so you, if you don't have any uh, net benefits of the firm? Net benefits of the firm or, uh, yeah. Wait, where, was, where, was, where did she make the argument that the firm was net beneficial in the law? Uh, the extension of McAvoy, did she make this argument below it? Um, as she's extending then these, this confidentiality argument between when she extended this confidentiality and McAvoy, she makes this argument for why that would then be why she talks about intersectionality and that's a focus of top closure. So it still has this type of intersectional discussion. Right? Which then I, I would buy, I mean, like she probably doesn't say, and this is literally net beneficial, but it clearly is making it okay. net beneficial. All right. Yeah. Is Michelle Ehlers, she went all in on this